Welcome to First Christian Church of Burbank, a community of God's love and hospitality. No matter who you are, no matter what's happened this, this past week, know that we believe God loves you and you are welcome in this space. A few things about worship as we move deeper into this time. One, you will notice uh, candles up here at the front and midway through the sanctuary. If that's a place you would like, you would like to express prayer, please do so during the songs, communion, or following worship. If you have prayers to share today, which we will do in a few moments, there are green prayer cards near the entryway, or you can certainly use Facebook Live to share those prayers. If that doesn't feel comfortable to you, find me or one of the leaders after worship and we'll make sure to incorporate your prayers in our prayer life. We will also be gathering for communion midway through the service. That is a space of welcome and hospitality, but there are multiple ways to do that, and that will be explained at the communion table. If you're joining us virtually, now is an opportune time to gather your communion elements. But know that however you celebrate that, or even if you choose not to come forward, you are still welcome in this space. In terms of Facebook Live, if you're joining us virtually, virtually, let us know where you're joining us from. It reminds us that we remain connected during this challenging time and that God loves unites us, even though miles might separate us. A word to our families, Nellie is not feeling well this morning, and so if you have children, make sure they hang out with Misan in the uh, children's space in the back of the sanctuary. And if you want more information about our children's ministry, reach out to us after worship and we'll get you the relevant information. And a reminder that I haven't made for a couple of weeks, we do have a space for children in the back of the sanctuary. If you hear noises or a dancing giraffe, in the back of the sanctuary. No, that's all about welcome and hospitality, and we welcome those noises and that giraffe that keeps moving its head back and forth. Anyway, a place of welcome and hospitality. Finally, we return to that notion that whoever you are, whatever you believe, and whatever brings you to this time, you are welcome here, and God's love indeed embraces you. With that spirit, let us stand as we are able and join together in song. Restless weaver, ever spinning threads of justice and shalom, dreaming patterns of creation where all creatures find their home, gathering up life's varied fibers, every texture, every hue, grant us. 
us your creative vision with us weave your world anew where earth's fragile web is raveling help us mend each broken strand bless our urgent bold endeavors cleansing water air and land through the spirit's inspiration offering health where once was pain strengthen us to be the stewards of your world men whole again restless weaver still conceiving new life now and yet to be binding all your vast creation in one living tapestry you have called us to be weavers let your love guide all we do with your reign of peace our pattern we will weave your world anew with your reign of peace our pattern we will weave your world anew Nothing that can stop our God. You're fighting for us. There's nothing that can. 
In a few moments, I will share the prayers from this congregation, those prayers that are of immediate concern, those we know and love, and prayers for this wider world. As I share a prayer from this congregation, I will say, God, in your mercy, I invite you to respond with the simple phrase, hear our prayer. But as we begin this time of prayer, I invite you to participate with me in a simple meditative exercise. Let us begin by breathing in God's gift of peace. Let us breathe in. Let us breathe out. Let us breathe in God's gift of hope. Breathing in, breathing out. Finally, let us breathe in God's gift of never-ending love. Breathing in, breathing out. We continue by giving thanks for this community of faith and our collaborators in ministry that help us embody love and hospitality. In particular, we give thanks for Home Again LA, Burbank Temporary Aid Center, Homemade Thursdays, Burbank Armenian Association, LA Voice, Green Chalice, Burbank Pride, Week of Compassion. And specifically this week, we give thanks for Project Mercy, who eight volunteers joined yesterday for the trip down to Tijuana. If you feel tired this Sunday, I don't want to minimize that, but there were a couple of people who started at 4 a.m. yesterday and didn't get back till about midnight. <laughs> and especially for our drivers, who enabled the rest of us to sleep during that long car ride. But let us give thanks for those who seek to make a difference in God's love. God, in your mercy. We continue to pray for Beverly Watson of Lawton, Oklahoma, who just yesterday uh, celebrated the life of her daughter, Heather Graham. We hold her and Heather Graham's family in prayer. God, in your mercy. We pray for Sandy Crane Everett, one of our virtual members, after she was admitted to the hospital this weekend for heart rate and blood pressure issues. They are awaiting test results. God, in your mercy. We continue to pray for those in our community who are facing some kind of medical uncertainty, recovering from surgery or unresolved health issue. For Cindy, Brian, and Nancy, Janine, Janet, Diane, Benny, Gina and Forrest, and Pam J. God, in your mercy. We also continue to pray for Ben and Andy as their family expands and their evidence of love is growing. God, in your mercy. We also have a prayer request from families with children going to sporting events, musical theater, and a number of other things. As the spring heats up, parents become more stressed while children become more excited. So we hold those families in prayer as they look at performances, wins, losses, and a myriad of emotions with that. God, in your mercy. We also continue to pray for the leadership of First Christian Church of Lawton, Oklahoma, as they face difficult decisions in the coming weeks and months. God, in your mercy. On Facebook Live, we have a prayer request for those in Lawton, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma in general, as they face tornadoes and stormy weather this weekend. God, in your mercy. We continue to pray for the unemployed and the underemployed in our community and those who seek adequate compensation and coverage for the work that they do. God, in your mercy. We also continue to pray for peace around the world, in particular for communities in Armenia, the Ukraine, Congo, the Sudan, and so many others that struggle with the violence and reality of war. God, in your mercy. 
And it doesn't take you long to read the headlines to be captured by what's going on in Palestine and Israel. Today marks over 33,000 lives lost in Palestine. We also reflect on the lives lost in Israel. But we know the catastrophe that awaits Gaza as supplies continue to be cut off, as medical aid becomes even more uncertain. So we pray this day for a ceasefire. We pray for the courage of our political leaders to be honest about what is happening and have the courage to embrace paradigms of peace. God, in your mercy. Your prayers. We also in this community continue to pray for those who experience homelessness in its various forms and those who seek to care for them and advocate for them. God, in your mercy. And we are well aware of the hateful rhetoric that is continuing to increase in our communities around sexism, homophobia, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, and so many other systems that marginalize and surround people with hate. We pray for those who are victim to that rhetoric and those actions. God, in your mercy. We also have a prayer request for those struggling with addiction. And we pray for those who stand with them as well. God, in your mercy. Finally, we turn our attention back to this community of faith. May we continue to be a place of hospitality, of love, and of justice. God, in your mercy. Let us continue this time in song. you to join me in a time of prayer. God of stories and storytelling, you write among us this day stories of hope, of joy, of growing families, of community, of friendship. There are also stories of deep despair, oppression, 
whispers of hate and unspeakable violence. We ask that in the midst of those realities that you continue to write and tell for us the story of unending love, of life over death, of hope over despair, of love over hate, of your presence that holds us all together. Indeed, we have named aloud this morning the prayers of our lives for individual concerns of health and healing, for the realities of family, for also things that we are unable to speak aloud. Indeed, we trust that in the mystery of this time, you hear those things that reside deep within us, questions, fears, doubts, shames, all those things that are also part of the story of you and our lives. Finally, God, hold all of our stories together, surrounding them with love, grace, compassion, and the story of your redemptive love. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Good morning, FCC Church of Burbank. Thank you. Today's scripture reading is from the book of Luke, um, chapter 24, verses 13 to 24. And it says, now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them whose name was Cleopas answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was one of the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body, there they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found, found it it's just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Thanks to be the Lord. I invite you to join me in a time of prayer. God of story and storytellers, open us this way to the words we use, the stories we tell here, and even the ones we are striving to write anew. In your name we pray, amen. Sometimes I ask rhetorical questions and I don't want answers. Other times I ask questions and I do want answers. This morning when I ask this question, I want an answer. So I'm just going to let you sit with that. This is not a rhetorical question. What are the themes of the stories you have told or heard this past week? You might need a minute to sit with that to kind of think back on the, even the past two hours. But what are the themes of the stories you have either told or heard this past week? Protest. I was expecting that one. 
opposing opinions, second chances, conflict. What? Conflict. Conflict at universities. Oddly enough, I anticipated some of these answers. And I began writing this sermon before the explosion of headlines that simply mentioned something that had already been going on for weeks. Any other answers to my story? Not, not to my story, but to my question. Great need. Ironic connections between people. I'm going to keep waiting for answers until that horn stops. For those online, there's a horn going on in the background. Peace. What? Death. Kevin. Oh, oh, what's online, Kevin? Faith, hope, and love. All the best, Brandon, bless you. Uh oh. Well, let's continue this journey. Because the truth is, the scripture reading we've heard this morning in Milton Red so well is, I believe, surrounded in storytelling. <laughs> Not much derails me. But the truth is, this story is held in that space of storytelling. Did you catch it as Milton was reading it? Those disciples were on the road to Emmaus and they were exchanging simply with one another stories of what had happened most recently in their, in their lives. I'm going to encourage somebody in here to make sure it's not your car. OK, thank you. Thank you, Britt. Um, they were walking with one another, telling the story that had happened to them that past week. And let me take a moment to briefly remind you of the theme of that particular story. Their rabbi, Rabuni, teacher, had been arrested, tried, and convicted of treason. And not only that, their ethical teacher that they had loved and who had inspired them with a vision of God's kingdom seemingly had met the brunt force of the thing we know as empire. This is going to be a struggle this morning. You might get a very short sermon. <laughs> they had met the full weight of that thing we know as empire. But something else happened in the storytelling that was going on that, on that road to Emmaus. And that is what biblical scholars like John Dominic Crossan, Marcus Borg, and so many others would call the development of the story of resurrection. I'm going to use that phrase again, the development of the story of resurrection. Because most scholars that align with Borg, Crossan, and others talk about that that wasn't a simple story that emerged out of thin air. But those early disciples and even those who came after them had to go through the painstaking process of writing, telling, and developing that story. Now, I don't want to remove the remarkable belief that something peculiar happened that Easter morning. But the truth is, scholars say that it took time to fully articulate that. that it took time for them to turn to one another to begin to understand the narrative of resurrection and what that meant for their lives. A report, Britt? Okay. For, 
Okay, for those online, we have a car alarm going off behind me, and I'm doing my best. But the truth is, that is what was beginning to happen on that road to Emmaus, is the slow stepping through and the writing of resurrection and what that meant. The past couple of weeks, we've been stepping through those stories that developed within the early Jesus movement. The story of doubting Thomas, the story of sharing fish and bread, the story of resurrection. And they are mysterious and wild, as I said earlier. They define logic. They point, point to the mind's capacity to creativity and to mysticism. But at the crux of those stories <laughs> is the overcoming of that which seeks to undo us. Let me say that again. At the crux of those stories is the overcoming of that which seeks to undo us. That what those disciples were doing on the road to Emmaus was slowly, intentionally crafting a story that would write something about God's presence that said that which seeks to undo you does not have ultimate power. Let me say that again. It's a fundamental theological claim. That which seeks to undo you does not have the end power. That is the story that was being told and written. And for those disciples in the first century of Palestine, it was the story of empire not having the last word. It was the story of Caesar not having the capacity to kill the human spirit. It was the story of God's love surpassing systems of hate, marginalization, and oppression. And that buried deep within the writing of that story is articulating ways in which we as people of faith and humanity can continue to write stories of hope, justice, love, and inclusion in the midst of those powers and principalities. That might seem theoretic, theoretical and theological, but is oh so profound. I wish somebody would write the story of turning off their car alarm. But it is significant for those early disciples on the road to Emmaus to begin to craft that story and exchange it with one another. And did you hear some of the elements in the language that Milton read? The centrality of women in the telling of that story. Did you hear that? They were astounded, those women. And as we know from the resurrection stories, they were the first ones to tell that story of overcoming that which seeks to undo us. And we know through the arc of history that it is women that often bear that truth and that mark that is profound that those disciples even name that in the first century. And they also name the grief and sadness of that moment and what empire, violence, and hate can do. Don't you know what happened this past week? Psychologically, that's naming one's grief and trauma. That's naming that which has left marks on us as human beings and as a society. So as we step through this particular resurrection story, what do I think we are called to resurrect? The art of storytelling. And not just any kind of run-of-the-mill storytelling, but this kind of deep, profound, and radical storytelling. Storytelling that hints that that which seeks to undo us cannot overcome us. That which seeks to create death, hate, and marginalization can't have the last word. Deep kind of storytelling that enables us to be writers of love, hope, and justice in this world. Great writer Flannery O'Connor 
explain that there's something fundamental in storytellers and listeners. That when the story of a fall is told, we're all wanting to write or listen to the redemption. That there's something fundamental to us as storytellers. That we look for that redemption. That's what Flannery O'Connor said and explained. And I believe those early disciples were doing that very thing. Looking for redemption in what they'd experienced that past week. Yearning for hope in the midst of very heavy despair. Beginning to write what we now call as resurrection. What stories have you told or heard this past week? Rhetorical question. You've already answered it. But they're troubling stories, no doubt. Numbers begin to climb, not begin, continue. College students all over this country are finding their voices. That's just one story from this past week. There are other stories at work as well. Pay attention to them. In the words of grief and trauma, name the tragedies that have occurred within our world. They are heavy. They are no less than the empire that existed in the first century. It might be named differently. We might call it new things. But that kind of power and structure continues to exist in our world. Name it. Those disciples on the road to Emmaus knew how to tell that story quite well. But there are also stories that persist and continue that point to our capacity to overcome that which seeks to undo us at our most basic level. There are stories of people who speak when the world wants them to be silent. There are stories that talk about faithful celebration when people don't want them to celebrate. There are stories of love when there are systems and institutions that would rather write a story of hate and marginalization. There are stories that are told of resurrection, new life, and overcoming the shadows. That's the kind of thing we are called to resurrect. And that kind of work is really quite difficult. Another great storyteller of our time and place is Fred Craddock. A disciple pastor, you've probably heard of him if you've been in the disciples for a couple of decades. But his capacity to weave stories and tell of God's love and God's hope was quite profound. I encourage you to look him up and to Google him and to just simply skim some of his quotes because he will tell us the task of not only the preacher, but the church itself and the faithful is to tell stories that engage that fundamental truth, that light overcomes darkness, love overcomes hate, hope overcomes despair, life overcomes death itself. family of God. There's a story we are writing in this world individually and collectively. May we practice the art of telling stories of resurrection, finding spaces and opportunities to act in ways that embody hope, love, and justice in this world that does not dismiss the call to name, to point at, but it must be wedded to telling and writing those stories of resurrection, hearing them, rehearsing them, lifting them up, singing them, preaching them, praying them. On that road to Emmaus, 
They were telling a story. That's what this is wrapped around. A stranger, as they suppose, heard that story. But what this particular telling reveals to us is their capacity to write something that hinted to us that that which seeks to undo us as human beings does not have the final say, does not have the final word, even though it might seem like it. Let us end on that note and find ways to write and tell stories of resurrection. This Sunday, tomorrow, next week, and as we continue to walk through the realities of this world, be writers of resurrection, be tellers of resurrection, be listeners to resurrection. Thanks be to God. Amen. It's Dave Engel's lucky day if he's here. I haven't seen him. He's been wanting me to do a song during the communion meditation for years. Oh, hey, that's why. I don't have eyes in the back of my head. So, uh, so today is your day, and hopefully the rest of you will also get something out of this, but, but particularly wanted to call that out. Um, I love this theme, and I love the idea of resurrecting storytelling. Uh, I appreciate that Brandon, you know, at the end of the sermon named all these ways that we can tell stories and songwriting and singing is, is one of them. And for me, as a young person learning to play an instrument, writing songs was a really pivotal and powerful way to tell stories different from the things that I saw around me. And right now that feels especially poignant as we continue to witness, I, witness a genocide in Palestine and genocides in other parts of the world, some of which have been ongoing for years, um, that we use the language that speaks to those things and that we also have the courage and the hope to imagine different things. Um, so I wanted to write a song, or I wanted to sing a song that I wrote for the summer camp that I go back and help out every year. This year their theme is food. It's a church camp, uh, so there's lots of food in the Bible. And, and uh, I couldn't find a song that was quite in line with the theme, so I wrote one. And as we are here getting ready to come to this table, I would like to share that with you also.
us cry out we are fed help us to love as you led there's more than enough for all this hunger your love is endless says your wonder you rain down us to see ourselves through your kind eyes. Hold out our hands and share the feast. We hold out your hands. Let us cry to love as you live. There's more than enough for all this hunger. Your love is endless as your wonder. Your love, your love, your love is endless. Your love is endless. Let us cry. This meal is understood in different ways and through different belief systems. You are welcome to participate regardless of what you believe about the bread, the cup, and God's presence. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. 예수께서 잡히시던 날 밤에 빵을 들어 감사를 드리시고 떼어 제자들에게 주시며 말씀하셨습니다. This bread is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 이와 같은 방법으로 잔을 들어 말씀하셨습니다. This cup is the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. You are welcome to participate. Um, you are welcome to take the all-in-one communion cup or come forward to receive the bread and cup. We also have a gluten-free option. If you are joining us virtually, please prepare the communion elements as you feel moved.
Good morning. Um, take the moment to fill each word of our Lord's Prayer, and please be free to play in the language that your heart uh, connects deeply with. I will do it in my first language. Padre nuestro, que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación. Líbranos de todo mal. Tuyo es el poder y la gloria por siempre, Señor. Amén. And now we've come to that time in our service in which we remind ourselves of the myriad of things going on in this community of faith. And I've got somebody up here who's going to help me out. All right? Hi. <laughs> Um, so I have no idea how to start this out, so I asked Random for help, and he told me, um, uh, I think you should guys, you guys should donate money to us so we could buy stuff for the youth program <laughs> and for the camp. <laughs> um, so I think you should donate money to for to buy coloring pencils so we um, and everything we need so we could have fun. Um, so now what? Just keep going. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Um, and today is the youth hike, um, so I'm excited for that. And. Um, Every week we have opportunities for study, reflection, and community engagement. Um, nearly every Wednesday is our weekly studi study gr group. Readings are available through the weekly email and website. The neighborhood walking group meet at the church every Thursday at 10 a.m. Um, Thursday evening is an opportunity to check from people around the United States, share stories, and ask thoughtful questions. Homemade Thursdays, a group that connects with those who are experiencing homelessness while providing a warm meal. We use the kitchen on Thursdays. We need volunteers in the kitchen to help pack at 12.30 p.m. or volunteers to help deliver food to the encampments at 2 p.m. Our monthly ministries include Burbank Temporary, temporary Aid Center lunch packing on the first Saturday of the month. This Saturday, May 4th, is the next opportunity. Queer Fellowship Club is the second Sunday. That's exciting. Um, Holistic Hikers on May 18th. We meet at 9 a.m. in the church parking lot. So now we'll bring you back to Brandon. Thank you, Jamila. Your courage amazes me. Um, so there are lots of opportunities at First Christian Church, and she went through a number of them. If you want more information, make sure you sign up for our weekly email if you haven't done so already. If you're not getting that but think you've signed up, reach, up, reach out to me after worship, and we'll get you the relevant information. Or if you have questions about any of those opportunities, find one of the leaders or me after worship, and we'll try to answer those questions. Finally, guests, visitors, um, Long-time members, new members, you're invited to stick around for coffee and conversation after worship. Uh, it is being hosted by Silva, Verouge, and Marina, so stick around for that. We are always looking for new volunteers for coffee and conversation. The sign-up sheet is out in the narthex. Now in that spirit of shared meal, love, and hospitality, let us stand as we are able and join together in song. Turned out, we're happy, shining, blessed. 
and are the ones who hunger. So when our poverty is plain, I'll try and burn it in my brain. And trace a line around your face to paint a picture. So further up and further in, we've nowhere else to go. As we plant the seeds of toil and tears, it's beauty we will sow. Blessed are the ones, blessed are the ones, blessed are the hungry ones. Let's build a house with turned out doors so we can share what love affords and pour ourselves out like a wine that we've been saving so when our well is running dry and when we raise our glasses high happy shining are the faces of the thirsty so further up and further in we've nowhere else to go but you give us seeds of toil and tears It's beauty we will sow Blessed are the ones oh, Blessed are the ones oh, Blessed are the thirsty ones What we need, it's joy that we will sow. Blessed are the ones, blessed are the ones, blessed are the hungry ones. Yes, blessed are the ones, blessed are the ones, blessed are the God, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all persons. Honor all creation. Love and serve God. Rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the love of God, the light of Christ, and the power and communion of that Spirit be with each and every one of us. Let us go in peace. Amen.